When editing your video in Final Cut Pro, Blade Near Clip is most likely your most common keyboard shortcut you use. So wouldn't it make sense to make this as quick and easy as possible? To streamline this, go up to your menu bar, click on Final Cut Pro, Commands and Customize. Select your default command set, open the drop down again and duplicate it. Give it a name and click OK. Click on the B key on your virtual keyboard, grab the default blade tool shortcut and drag it down to one of the open spots. Now grab the blade shortcut, which is by default command B and drag it up to the no modifier spot. Bring the blade tool shortcut back up to the command B spot. Well here, let's modify a couple more shortcuts. Click on the left square bracket key, move the select left edge shortcut down to an open spot and bring up the trim start shortcut to the no modifier spot. Bring the select left edge shortcut back to the option modifier spot. Repeat the same steps for the right square bracket key, moving the trim end shortcut to the no modifier spot. Save your command set and close the pop-up window. Now, when editing your video to blade your clip, all you have to do is tap the B key and your clip will be split at the skimmer. Move your playhead to where you want to trim your clip to and hit the right or left square bracket key to ripple trim the start or end of your clip to your skimmer. Next, let's take a look at a few preferences you should change to streamline your editing experience in Final Cut Pro. Press Command comma to open up your preferences window and select the import tab. Set your preferred import settings here. Now, when you need to import more clips into Final Cut Pro, all you need to do is open a finder window, grab your clips and drag them straight into the media browser or even down into your timeline. All the import settings you selected in your preferences window will be applied to your clip. When editing your project and use a keyboard shortcut to add a clip to your timeline, by default, your playhead will be placed at the end of the clip you just added. This is annoying because now you have to scroll all the way back to your spot in the timeline. To fix this, go to your preferences window, select the editing tab, and deselect position playhead after edit operation. Now, when you connect a clip to your timeline, your timeline and playhead will stay in the same spot. By default, anytime you make any adjustments to the clips in your timeline, Final Cut Pro renders your clips for smoother playback. This not only takes up unnecessary space, it also slows down your machine. If you edit on one of the newer Macs, especially anything with Apple Silicon, you don't need to do this. Go to your preferences window and turn this off by selecting the playback tab and deselected background render. If you do run into choppy playback, you can easily render the clips in your timeline that are causing this. Select one or more clips you need to render and use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl R to render only the selected clips. Another setting you should change in Final Cut Pro is your default color correction tools. Adjusting the color in your clips with a color board sucks, so I strongly recommend changing this to either your color wheels or color curves. Go to your settings window, select the general tab, and from the color correction dropdown, select your preferred color correction tools. This eliminates one unnecessary step and makes your life easier. Now, let's take a look at your editing workspace. By default, in the Final Cut Pro window, you have your media browser, the viewer window, the inspector window, and your timeline visible at all times. Depending on where you are in your edit, you may not need some of these, and all these windows do is take up screen real estate. You can easily hide any of these windows with simple keyboard shortcuts. Control Command 1 will hide or show your media browser. Control Command 2 will hide or show your timeline, and Command 4 will toggle your inspector window. You can take this one step further and set up a custom workspace. Set up your windows just the way you like, go up to the menu bar, select Windows, Workspaces, and Save Workspace As. Give it a name and click the Save button. Next time you need this window configuration, just go back to the menu bar, select Windows, Workspaces, and your custom workspace to have your windows set up just like you saved them. If you ever need to go back to the default setup, pressing Command-0 will take you back to the default workspace. Let's take a look at a couple more defaults you should change. First, let's set up a default export destination. I always export my videos using the Apple Devices 4K preset. To set this up as your default export destination, open up your settings window again, go to the destinations tab, and select your preferred export preset in the sidebar. Right click on it and make default. Now, when your project is finished and you're ready to export it, all you have to do is use a keyboard shortcut Command E to export your project using your default preset. The same thing can be done with your titles and transitions. For titles, 
select your most commonly used title, right click on it and make default title. You can also assign another title, doesn't even have to be a lower third, to a default lower third command. To add a title to your timeline, just use a keyboard shortcut Control T to add your default title or Shift Control T to add a title set up as a default lower third. Transitions are virtually the same. Just select your transition you use all the time, right click on it and make default. To add this to your timeline, select a cut and press Command T to add your default transition to your selected cut. While we're on this topic, if you have an intro or a title card with more than one title, graphic or even sound effects you want to reuse, you don't have to build them from scratch every time. Once you have your intro or a title card built, select all your elements and press Command C to copy them. Make a new project. Press Option W to add a gap clip to your timeline and Option B to paste all your elements as connected clips. Now, when you want to use the setup again, just go back to this project, select the preset you want to use, copy it and paste it into your current project. I have quite a few more tips and tricks like these ones to speed up and simplify editing in Final Cut Pro. If you want me to make another video like this, make sure to hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you back here next week.